It's about 5.20 on a Monday evening and I'm thinking I might have a chance to get out to the hives and do just a little bit of observation and maybe a little honey collection. <sighs> Always running short on time. Hey Maggie. I'm running out to the horse area because I'm collecting the, the cart because the golf cart that I normally take back to the beehives is dead. It won't run, even though it has new batteries. Something's wrong. Anyway, we're gonna use this cart to carry our equipment back and hopefully carry some honey back to the house. I wanted to share with you too that I am working on becoming more organized as a beekeeper. I'm not 100% there yet. I maybe never will be 100% there, but I'm working on it. I'm consolidating the equipment. I actually have a little freezer. Let me see if I can show you that. Let me check to make sure it's not a mess. Nope, it's a mess. I do have a little freezer. We've been lucky enough, blessed, enough to get a small freezer that is now dedicated to my beekeeping stuff and this space here on the back porch I have a shelf so this shelving space is now dedicated to storing some boxes and tools and uh, you know just things that were sort of everywhere before now it 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 has more of a place now so Hopefully from now on when I need some beekeeping stuff. I know I'm coming here. I have So my jackets hung up Right next to the brooder some chickies I Have some frames the frames that don't need to be in the freezer. There's some frames out here some boxes uh, My tools my smoker some extra gloves and some different things hive boxes um, You know the nuke boxes anyway I'm working on it. I have this bowl here on the table. I've been scraping wax and comb and stuff into it to let the bees come over and clean it out. To eat whatever they want out of it. Some of the honey and pollen and stuff that's left in it. Some of it got stuck. The sun melts the wax pretty good wherever it's sitting and it that's exactly what it did here so I put it in this bowl and it sort of melts down and the bees are cleaning it up I might need these lids on those nuke boxes to carry back some of that uh, some of the honey that I think is sitting out there waiting for me now I gotta go back in and get my jacket Jacket and gloves. Let's get to it. Right away, coming in here, my first observation is that. Hive number two looks good with bees on it. Hive number three looks good with bees on it. Hive number one looking a little thin there. Let's take a look inside. All right, let me get you positioned up here on hive number two with a nice downward look into hive number one. And let's just take a peek. It's been a couple weeks. Got some critters in the corner there. I'm not sure what they are. It's been a couple weeks since I've looked into these hives. And that makes me a little nervous because they could have swarmed or, you know, whatever. They could have lost a queen and died. There's still some bees, but let's see how they're doing in here. 
They do have some honey. They're capping some honey on that small bit of frame there or small bit of uh, comb there. Oh yeah, last time I was out here I forgot I put a queen excluder on this one just so the queen wouldn't get into the top box. I'm never really sure whether the queen excluder is a good thing or a bad thing. There's lots of people who talk about it being essential and other people who say it just disrupts the flow of the hive or the the um, the way that the bees work and it's not a good thing. That's a good good bunch of honey right there. They drew that one out nice on both sides. Most of these frames are empty. I put uh, I did checkerboard them last time, so I put empty frame, full frame, empty full, and that's what I'm seeing here with with the uh, the pattern. Still, they haven't done a lot of extra drawing of of honey of comb rather to put honey in it so I think I'm gonna leave that as it is I'm not gonna take any of this honey well there's several there's two in a row there that's a nice full frame there take that one out see what I can do here silly me I didn't yeah I do I do have some frames over there so I'm gonna put this one back together again every other full empty full empty and we're gonna take this top box off and just look at the health of the hive down below the bees are being extremely respectful right now that's good. I didn't even use smoke yet. It's nice when I don't have to. Alright, so I know there's some good honey still in every other frame on top. But we're going to leave that. Because we're going to let the bees continue to work in this box. They haven't been drawing out. A whole lot because there's not a lot of food there's not a lot of pollen and, and nectar available so let's just get into this bottom box we're not going to dig around too much it's a little bit late in the evening but it would be really nice for me to see a queen or eggs or something just just to let me know that everything is okay So I'm going to check to see how they are on, on drawing comb. You can see this, I did um, every other frame here as well. So there's some empty frames and full frames. I just want to see if they've done any drawing out of comb. Looks like they did a little bit. You can see the those spots there, that's comb that they've drawn out. I see one beetle. Dead beetle. Because I just killed it. It's a very, it's, it's very warm still this evening, but it's pleasant because there's a little breeze. All right, hopefully we see some brood or some eggs or something in here. Okay, they still have some empty spots on there. So they're still drawing out comb, they still have room. Let's see if we see, there's nectar. The nectar is the juice. Actually that looks like they're turning that into honey. Dripping a little bit of honey out the other side. So they're filling this one up with uh, food resources. More food resources, more nectar, some pollen. I'm not sure what would be providing pollen at this stage, but there's something, unless that's just held over. All right, the bees are very calm. 
which tells me that most likely there's a, a good queen in here. When they don't have a queen, they're a little more upset. And there's some brood on that one. Uh, let's see, there's also... Um, I'm looking for eggs. see eggs on this side I do see eggs okay so there's eggs down in there I wish you guys could see that but right down in the bottom of those cells there are some eggs so there is a good queen or at least within the last three days there has been a queen I don't see any queen cells or queen cups and there, oh, there's a, there's a queen cell. I lied. See right up here? They are building a queen cell. That doesn't mean they don't have a queen, but... Uh, that one has... That one's empty. There's no egg in that one. But they're being very calm. And I do see eggs. So I think we're okay. I'm going to put this back together. We're just going to put that right back in there, the same order that we took it out. And those were staggered on purpose to try to get those bees to build on that, uh, those small cell, the small cell frames there, the plastic frames. And this hive has no honey to take. I mean, I could take honey, but I want them to use those resources on that top for themselves to help build out that top box. So I'm going to put this one right back together. My inner cover. And we're going to button this one up and move on to the next hive, which is hive number two. The hive you're sitting on. So we'll turn this right around here. Get you adjusted. Point you up here so you can see a little bit more. I have those nuke boxes sitting in the cart over here. That's for just in case I get some honey frames that I need to take out and take up to the house. So I think this one has some honey in it if I remember correctly. Which if anyone knows me, remembering correctly is uh, a rare phenomenon. Alright, a rare occurrence for me to remember something correctly. But I have not forgotten, we just did a live show Saturday like we do every Saturday. And we did a, a little giveaway. I have that all bundled up and ready to go. I just haven't put it in the mail yet, so I haven't forgotten out, forgotten that. Food Forest Permaculture, the account Food Forest Permaculture uh, won that. And I'm really excited to send that package off. Just because it's fun. Participating in community is fun. All right, first frame here. Looks like they're building out on one end. They have honey on two sides. They have honey in the middle of the one side and on the outside, right there on the end, you can see that bit of honey there. It's looking very tasty. Oh yeah, and this, this frame, this frame was one that did not have any foundation and they built it out. That's always exciting when they can build out something without foundation without guides or anything actually this one did have a guide it's got the uh, popsicle sticks in the top you see the popsicle sticks up here they were stuck in that top uh, groove and the bees build down off of that so this one when I cut the honey out of it I'll be able to put some of that comb into uh, honey jars and sell it as uh, honey with comb but again, we did a little bit of every other. This is one that I had cleaned off. And I left a little bit of comb on the bottom. And they cleaned that up real nice. And they, they haven't yet used that comb, but they will. Okay. 
I'm not going to I'm not going to dig around in this top box. I believe the honey in this one is in the in the second box here. So uh, I'm going to put this one back together. I can see that they haven't done a whole lot up here. This is exciting. I really I really do enjoy beekeeping. It's way more fun when they're not trying to kill you. And right now, they are not trying to kill me. So it's very exciting. I think there's some honey. All right, we might be in the same boat here. So that one's empty. I think, I think this is another one that was every other Uh-oh. Did I just see a moth fly out of that hive? That is never a good sign. Those wax moths, they can destroy a hive pretty fast. Yeah, that's some good looking honey right there. Uh, it's not completely full on both sides. And again, we're in the same position on this box. It's every other frame, there's empty, full, empty, full. Although there's some on the end here. Let me, let me, before I say a whole lot, let me take a look. So that one is mostly empty. Another one here that's mostly empty. That is so cool when the bees do that, let me show you. You see I'm bridging the gap down there. Let me keep scooting these over. Lots of beautiful capped. See that? That's just that's just really really nice looking honeycomb right there. So we do have one, two, three, four, five all in a row. I'm gonna put my box, <clears throat> my nuke box here. This is, uh, this is, this brush is really wore out. I left it lay up against the smoker one time and burned out some, some bristles. This is natural bristles. I think it's horse hair. Yep, burned it out. So this brush is on its way out. So the goal is for me to, to brush the bees off, get them transferred into this nuke box and Cover it up so I don't get a lot of bees in it. We're gonna get them riled up just a little bit by giving them a shake. Uh, sometimes that gets them off. They were holding on pretty tight. Or my shaking skills are pretty weak. They do not like this brush either. But I gotta get them off there somehow. This is where I apologize to the bees. Sorry bees, I lost my smoke. I took too long. All right, make sure I'm buttoned up pretty good. Now there's no brood on the bottom. That's important to know. I don't want, uh, I don't want to take any brood in with the honey. Yeah, they're just a 
I'm not shaking very well tonight. Can you hear them? Yeah, they do not like it when I brush them off like that. See if I can get one more full, one more full frame here, and then on the next hive, I got to make sure that my smokers. Now that I've riled some up, I got to make sure the smoker is in good shape. Yeah, that's another good frame right there. Let's see if I can shake them. If I work fast enough, I get very few bees in the box. There's some in there, but not. Woo. All right, now I gotta make a decision if I'm going to keep this top box on, or if I'm gonna put some of these frames into that other box and only keep one. I think that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so right now I have an empty, a full empty, let me just start doing this checkerboarding again. Full, empty, full, empty. And then get some out of that other box. I can put this... I can put this nuke box back in the cart over here. Oh, exciting, isn't it? And this is that one that had the, the uh, no foundation. So we're going to put that right here in the middle. Another empty one. And we'll search for another full one in here. Or at least one that has a lot of honey. And this one's not full, but it's got honey on both sides, at least a little bit. We'll put that one on the end. And then we'll put one empty one right down in here to finish it off. That leaves me with five empty ones in this other box. Now that they, they'll start working on this and be able to protect. The good thing about reducing the, the when you're in a, a dearth, which, let me get you up here where I can talk to you. When you're in a dearth, that means that there's not a lot of food. There's, I really should get this hive closed up. Hold on one second. All right, I gotta be careful adjusting my glasses because if I touch my face, those bees can get through that mesh and get me. So let's uh, let's walk away from the hive for just a second. And so when when you're in a dearth, which means there's no food resources, there's not a lot, there's not a lot of water, there's not a lot of pollen, there's not a lot of nectar. Um, they're not going to be building up a whole lot. It's surprising to me actually that they have. Uh, stored honey like they have But there has been some resources there's still been some mesquite and some hackberry and things But it's mostly dried up at this point So when you're in that dearth sorry, I keep distracting myself They can't build up their resources and they also don't need a lot of real estate in the hive because then that just means that's more area that they have to protect from predators and pests the the mites and beetles and uh, uh, moths and different things so by reducing that by one box and they still have space to build up it's going to be better for them because now they have a little less space to worry about a little less space to cool down uh, because they do maintain the temperature in the hive at around I think it's 93 degrees and it's 90 generally 99 100 out here so they have to do work a little bit to get that uh, cooled down and the more space there is the, the harder they have to work so hopefully I just helped them by reducing that down to one box that has some honey and some empty space that they can still work but uh, not quite as much so we're going to go over here to hive number three. 
can't see it very well in the light, but I think it's over there somewhere. And we're gonna see if, uh, what the condition of that hive is. So we're going back to the house with uh, nine frames of honey. And I've already extracted about five gallons of honey this year. And if, if you're curious what that process looks like, you can go check out one of my very popular videos, which is extracting four gallons of honey last year, and I step you through the process. Lots of people make comments. Some of them are nice, some aren't, but that's okay. Uh, the process is there for you to learn if you're curious, and it's just kind of fun. There's, you know, there's a bit of a, a feeling there. People, people like to comment that it's quite satisfying. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what that means, but hey, I'm glad they liked the video. So you can go check that out. I'll, I'll put a link. Which side will it be on? One of these corners will have a link to that video. Uh, we're back up at the house. You're sitting right next to that bowl of wax that you saw at the beginning of the video. And wow, my hands sweat inside those gloves. It's probably about 97, 98 degrees right now. So it was warm. There was a little breeze in this ventilated jacket. A little breeze helps because it goes right through the jacket and your sweat evaporates. And you can see how sweaty my hands are. Woo! It's always a lot of fun to go back to the bee yard and take care of business. I, I, I miss out on a lot of opportunities because uh, life is pretty crazy and busy. If you follow along, you're aware of some of the things going on here on the farm with family. Uh, but uh, not complaining. I love my life. We're very blessed. But we do have some challenges that take time. And that's what we do is we give it time. And we take care of the rest of the business as we can. Alright, uh, now that we're back to the house... Uh, this this frame box is full of drone honey. This is part of what I extracted last time. Uh, drone comb, I should say. Uh, I took the honey out, I spun it out, and uh, the, the bees cleaned it up. So these are going to go in the freezer to eliminate any possibility of beetles or moths. And uh, then that box is going to be stored in here with the rest of my stuff. Yay. And those nine frames are going to be uh, spun out real quick. Uh, not today, but I do have uh, my buddy's spinner. He's going to bring it to me, or I'm going to go get it, and we're going to be able to spin some honey. That's probably going to give me, let's see, I got about 36 pints out of 20 frames. So that's about 18 pints per 10 frames. I got 9 frames, so I might get 15 pints or so out of what I just uh, what I just collected. So hopefully that's the case. If you're local, I do have honey for sale. I have 36 pints in the kitchen ready to go, all bottled up. And uh, if you're not local, sorry, I only do local. I don't ship. Hey, uh, I thought I had a thought, but then the thought left me. So I'll just leave you with this. Thank you very much for being a part of my story. I truly do believe that everyone has a story and every story counts. Not just my stories, your stories. You count, you matter. So thank you for being a part of this community. I'll talk to you soon.